So a viewer has asked me about Prince George, this little boy and his marriage in the future. We'll give it a shot. I hope you like the video. If you do like it, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I am Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come with. Poor little George, I feel like we're intruding, but I'll just do a quick read and see um, if this gives us some insight into George's future marriage. So, per the 1701 Act of Settlement, royals are forbidden from marrying a Roman Catholic. The monarch of the family is the head of the Church of England, which is Protestant. But now, royals are allowed to marry someone of any faith as long as the queen approves. And no nicknames are allowed, by the way. Royalty is expected to be addressed by their full given names rather than nicknames given to them by their families, Harry. Uh, then... Uh, the Royal Marriages Act of 1772, an act of uh, the, the Parliament of Great Britain, prescribes the conditions under which members of the British royal family could contract a valid marriage, a valid marriage um, in order to guard against diminishing the status of the royal house. This may be what screwed up uh, Prince Charles's marital bliss. Um, but anyway, the right of veto is vested in the sovereign. Uh, and if I understand, remember correctly, yeah, he couldn't marry C Camilla. That wasn't uh, going to be allowed. And so that's how he ended up with Diana. Okay, but however, this was repealed by the 2011 Perth Agreement, which came into force in 2015 and is under the succes succession of the Crown Act of 2013, where the first six people in line of succession need permission to marry if they and their descendants are to remain in the line of su succession. The act says no descendant of King George II, male or female, other than the kids of princesses who had married or might marry into foreign families, no descendant could marry without the consent of the reigning monarch. Any marriage contracted without the consent of the monarch is null and void. However, any member of the royal family under the, or sorry, over the age of 25, who had been refused the sovereign's consent, could marry one year after giving notice to the Privy Council, unless, of course, both houses of Parliament expressly declared their disapproval. It was also a crime to participate or uh, perform an illegal marriage of any member of the royal family, but this provision was repealed. Now, the original act was proposed by George III as a result of the marriages of his brothers, one who in 1771 had married a commoner and a widow, and the other in 1766 secretly married an illegitimate daughter and widow. The king himself, of course, was forced to marry for purely dynastic reasons, kind of like Charles and so there we go. In the 1950s, a lecturer in constitutional law at Liverpool University theorized that the act could no longer apply to anyone living because all the members of the immediate royal family were in fact descended from British princesses who had married into foreign families. The loophole, he said, is due to the act's wording, whereby the exemption for one condition reads as if it trumps the other. And it gets even more complicated after that, so it seems it does require an act of parliament to approve a royal marriage. Gosh, um, what if Prince George uh, turns out to be gay? Like, that hasn't happened before. Okay, so this is interesting. So the uh, viewer, Oldel Pasito Fajitas, what a name, has asked um, Prince George's future wife or marriage. And... Um, that question really uh, made me stop and think, especially after having done a little bit of research about how uh, a monarch um, or royal can be married. His future wife or marriage, just for me, the question itself, whether it was intended or not, leaves it open to that his future marriage may not be to a wife. And how will the monarchy deal with that? Because the whole point of being king 
is to leave an heir to the throne. And if you're not married to a wife, how exactly do you get that accomplished and remain in the royal uh, blood? Very interesting. I've got my phone on here and I'm waiting for something to happen. So I have to keep checking it. I'm sorry to tell you. But um, so, uh, Odell Pasito Fajitas. Prince George's future wife or marriage. What can the cards tell us? And this vice versa tarot, picked completely at random, seems very appropriate for the little signal that I picked up in that question whether Odell meant it to be that way or not. But first, let's have a moment of meditation. Okay. Vice versa tarot. Odell wants to know, Prince George, what about his future wife or marriage? What about his future wife or marriage? Now, as you remember, these cards have pictures on both sides. Very clumsy this week. And so uh, what I'll do is I won't be reading the side that's up. I'll turn the card over and read the side that we're not seeing. Okay, his future wife or marriage, Prince George. Let's get six cards right off the bat to get going. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Prince George's future wife or marriage. Signifier card. Okay, right off the bat, we have the Five of Cups. And the Five of Cups, this is interesting because the Five of Cups uh, tells us, um, it reminds us that we had five cups, three of them are spilled. You don't quite see the three that are spilled here. Let me flip this over so you can see them better. See they're spilled. Um, and, but you've got two cups left behind and a little rose growing up here. And we're seeing this person from the back. And what does that tell us about vice versa tarot? So uh, typically you're going to say about this five of cups is, uh, you know, you're worried about what you've lost, but you're not remembering what you've got left behind. So if in fact my little intuition uh, is, is, is sparked a little bit of uh, future truth here, um, this could be uh, the monarchy worried about we don't, if, if, he's, if he's not married to a woman, then uh, how do we get a monarch? What have we lost, but what have we still got left? Interesting. The challenge to that then is the six of cups. Cups are compassion, uh, emotion, heartfelt situations. And uh, the six of cups tells us, you know, uh, we, we want to remember, oh no, this is the nine of cups. Nine of cups then, ah, nine of cups is the happy merchant. Nine of cups is uh, wishes fulfilled. Okay, dreams coming true and proud to display all your uh, emotional trophies. Interesting. Challenge to, uh, we're worried about what we've lost, haven't quite considered what we still got left and it's challenged by emotional trophies. The base of this reading, lovers. In fact, these two kind of look, on the face of it, like two men. But of course, this is obviously a woman. But uh, the base of this reading is the Two of Cups, which is lovers. The past of this reading, then, is the 13, which is uh, the death card. And the death card isn't typically death, but it's the end of of something okay and so could this be the i am really honing in on this um this situation of not being a woman uh it could be the end of a tradition perhaps the sky of this reading then with this uh, queen of cups is a queen of uh compassion so maybe there will be a queen that's in the sky that's what we're aiming for. The past, uh, the likely outcome of this is with this two of pentacles, finding a balance, finding the way to make this uh, stay in play. Interesting read, especially with that twist that came into my mind about whether it's a, he has a wife or, or not in his marriage. The self of that very question then is this eight of swords feeling trapped by truth, justice, rules, and law. 
exactly correct. But we have a figure here that looks like a woman feeling trapped in that situation. And she's looking away from us, okay? We're seeing that these binds are not that tight, and they can be uh, slipped out of, okay? And this person can be freed from those binds of the past, perhaps. And uh, the environment that that's in with this uh, 10 of the Major Arcana, and this is the Wheel of Fortune, okay? So this is telling us that um, this is a crapshoot. It could work out some way that we don't expect. The hopes and the fears for this, then, with this uh, 14, which is temperance, finding that perfect balance and a major arcana, and then the likely outcome of the whole thing uh, with this nine uh, of the major arcana is the um, hermit look, shining a light, looking for the right action to take forward. You know, let me read through the whole thing again. And I've got to say, my intuition is just click it off like crazy about uh, my uh, suspicion as to whether uh, there will be a queen uh, for Prince George. So the signifier card is um, this Five of Cups emotion, uh, really looking at what you've lost and not remembering what's left behind. Could be the, the, the British government, uh, the British people saying, we need a queen. We don't have a queen. We want a queen. But not looking at what's left behind. Okay. Um, and then the um, challenge to that uh, is this Nine of Cups, uh, which is uh, displaying your emotional value and proud to do it. Wishes fulfilled. Okay. The base of this whole thing with this Two of Cups is the lovers. With a very androgynous looking set of people here. The uh, past of this reading is the Death card, the end of some sort of cycle. And in the sky of this, with this Queen of Cups, uh, and is it a Queen of Cups? I mean, the back is turned. Um, so this could say there will be the equivalent of a Queen for this George. It could, in fact, be a Queen uh, for Prince George. Or could it be something else? But that's in the sky. And it's not clearly seen to us that this is a Queen. The back is turned. Okay? The uh, likely outcome of this whole thing is finding that balance to make whatever the situation is work. The... Um, uh, very self of that question is feeling bound up by truth, justice, rules, and law. But we get the view that shows us that these binds are loose and can be wriggled out of. And, uh, and truth, justice, rules, and law can be overcome. Um, more of the rules and the law. and then the uh, But it's in the environment of Wheel of Fortune. It's a crapshoot. It could be anybody's game. And then the... That's interesting, too. And then the... Um, Hopes and the fears of this with this temperance again is finding that balance. But this is a major arcana card, really looking for a significant balance. And then the likely outcome of the whole thing is uh, this hermit really looking carefully ahead. So this might be something that, uh, if it turns out that uh, this is George's um, uh, preference, that he'll have hopefully a lifetime to consider uh, how this will work out. I'm just stuck on that, that it may not be a queen. That's what I got. This might have been one of my least um, reliable uh, draws, I'm feeling. But tell me what you think. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. So these are Los Scarabio cards. This is the Visa Versa Tarot. And uh, I'm going to tell you, the, the folks who have this idea have some difficult names, but I'm going to try to get through it. So Massimiliano... Filadoro, Lunea, Weatherstone, and the artwork by David Corsi. So nice, nice, nice cards. They've got that cool kind of magnetic clasp that's really neat to get. The box, if you gave it as a gift or if you received it, you think, wow, this was a very thoughtful gift. They've got all these nice little pulls that you can unpack everything easily with. And the uh, guidebook is a color guidebook, easy to read. Um, and lots of thought and intention into these uh, suggestions for the divinations that you can use. Um, the cards, again, have this nice little pull that you can get them out of the box with. But what I really love about these cards, well, it intimidated me for a long time, actually, is that there's no front and there's no back. There's a this side, which is indicated by the little embellishment on the right-hand side of the, of the card. And then there's a that side, which is in, indicated by a little embellishment, embellishment on the left side of the card. So you kind of get the idea that this is um, um, the... And there's no right and there's no wrong. There's no good and there's no bad. It's just that um, a different um, 
view on how to divine this card when it comes up. So the problem with them is that when you're shuffling them, you know, you know, once you've dealt your cards, you know what's going to be on the other side because, you know, it's there. So, you know, you're going to know that this is a uh, King of Cups uh, right away. Uh, if that doesn't bother you, if you can divert that from your mind, the cards are beautiful. And uh, so you see that the artwork goes right to the edge. Um, they give you nice hints uh, on the cards as to how they, uh, what they are. Because so, sometimes that can be an issue when you're trying to figure out uh, how to use these cards. And it doesn't matter which way you put them out because there's a this and a that side. And uh, you've got uh, work, things to work with. So it's almost like you're getting two decks of cards in one. And uh, it used to intimidate me, but now I love using these cards. And uh, they're glossy, they're easy to use, they slide off of each other, but not too in a bad way. And um, I like to spread them out like this so that, uh, or if I have a reading for someone, let them spread them out so that people kind of get their energy into the cards. And so this is the this and that, uh, vice versa tarot. And uh, I love them. Well, I'm Mark. This has been my journey through tarot. I'll be doing it again tomorrow if you want to go, so stop on by. Ciao for now. One, two, three. You really make a big difference. Thank you.